going on everyone? Christy with Clutter Reduction Junk Removal. Right now we're about to head into a apartment to give an estimate. I already know I can't do it today, so I'm gonna try to push it for tomorrow morning if I can, because obviously Thursday is Thanksgiving. And it was supposed to be just 26 boxes over the phone, but then they also said that they were thinking about leaving the place furnished. So they also wanna get a quote for the furniture as well. So we'll see what happens, and then we'll see if we can get it for tomorrow morning. But when we come back, I wanna talk about junk removal pricing for those who are looking to get into junk removal. I'm sure with 2024 around the corner, a lot of people are gonna to try to get out of their W-2 jobs and start working for themselves. I think that's a great idea. That's what I did. I was a professional mover for like five or six years and I loved the job itself, hated everything else about it, wanted to do my own thing where I could still utilize my skill set, but not as much stress behind it and operate at my own pace on my own time. And that's what I've been doing for the last two and a half years. And I am very comfortably happy regarding everything. So if you're looking to do the same thing, highly encourage it. But pricing is typically the hardest thing for the majority of people. So I wanna go over a couple of tips that I would recommend you start with as a beginner. After that, you can start implementing different adjustments as to how much you charge and how you charge. But for the beginning, you should keep it as simple as possible. So we're gonna get into that without excusing any major details. All right, we are done with the estimate. We did get it. We'll be going back tomorrow morning to do it. We are grabbing all the furniture, basically quoted them a full load, potentially a load in a quarter, depending on what they end up wanting to actually leave for furnishing, because a lot of times people would change their mind. I always make it a point to confirm and let them know, hey, based on what you showed me today, with the exception of what you might leave, I'm quoting you this. It may change if you add or pull away stuff. So always make sure people understand what you're quoting them for and why. Now, with that being said, let's get into pricing. I'm gonna keep this as short and sweet as possible. After every point, I'm gonna put up a screen with that same information so you can screenshot it if you need to keep it for your records. But hopefully this comes across as straightforward as possible so that it's easy to understand. And then as you learn and do this and learn from others, you will be able to adjust according to your needs. So the first thing to know is your surroundings and your location. You need to know ahead of time, is this area going to be profitable for me to work in? Do you have a high population? Do the people around you typically kind of working class and do it themselves? Or are they more city related where they would happily call another service to come out and do it because they don't want to even bother with it. Those are two very distinctive classes that you need to find out which one you are in because if you're more in the working class, there's a good chance you may not get as many jobs as you would be if you're in a city area. You don't have to be in like downtown city life. You just need that kind of demographic around you. The next thing is to know your cost of living and your cost of running the business. Even if you're doing this as a side hustle, I would recommend you try to run it like a business. So know all of your costs up front. Know how much your insurance costs if you're gonna do that. Know how much your dump charges you for trash, construction debris, vegetation, and the minimum charge. Four very important points. The first three are the type of things you're gonna be pulling away through trunk removal. The fourth one is to know how much it costs in the event you need an empty truck ready to go and you already have a couch back there. You need to know if you go drop that off, is it gonna cost you an arm and a leg or can you get away with just getting rid of it on its own and be good to go for the next day? So know those four things and then check your surroundings and make sure it's gonna be a profitable area to run your business in. The next thing is to understand how junk removal pricing typically works. So 99% of the country charges by volume, how much room something takes up in the truck. Volume. So whether you use a pickup truck, a cargo van, a minivan, you do a trailer and truck, you do a box truck, you do a junk truck, no matter what it is, you need to find out how much volume it holds. So calculate the length by the width, by the height, you're gonna get a total cubic footage, and then you're gonna divide that number by 27. That's going to give you how many cubic yards your vehicle holds. And that is going to be what you're going to reference when it comes to your pricing. 
the next thing is to figure out your increments. So typically you don't just go out and say, yeah, it's just gonna be 500 bucks no matter what. You base it on how much volume it fills in increments. So if you're doing like maybe a cargo van or a minivan or just a pickup truck with just a bed, no sides on it, you're not gonna have a whole lot of room. So maybe you just charge like a minimum pickup in a full load or a half a load in a full load. Or if you maybe have like a small box truck or like a five by eight or five by 10 trailer, maybe do, you know, a minimum quarter, half, three quarter full load. You know, the same thing can be said for larger trailers or larger box trucks or a junk truck. You can do quarters, you can do eights. Some franchises will do 16s. The reason for the breakdown is it actually works as a selling point for customers. So if you're filling up your truck and you're at three eighths of a load, you could tell a customer, hey, you're at three eighths of load. If you want to get bumped up to half a load, you can add on, you know, another item up to the size of a large nightstand. And it's only going to be a $30 difference versus if we have to come back, it's going to be a $100 minimum. So it's a nice selling point and it gives people some wiggle room versus just big jumps. So it works out in their favor and it helps you upsell. Next thing is surcharges. So you have your volume based, what you charge for, how much room something takes up in your truck, but then you have surcharges. So there's two main things that I like to charge for in addition to volume, that is weight and time. So if it takes me an additional half hour to do a job more than it should, there's a reason why. It's either there's a long walk, there's stairs, I have to park far away from the home that I'm residencing, or maybe I have to sit there and bag up a bunch of small stuff to bring it out to my truck. Whatever that reason is, I'm going to charge for that time. You can either just do increments of like 15 minutes, depending on how many people work with you. You could do hourly. You could break it up into individual reasons. So a lot of people would charge like 10 to $15 per flight of stairs they have to go up, or they'll charge $10 for every six steps. And the reason for the steps is you may go to a house that's five steps to get up to the front door. Well, guess what? If you plan on bringing stuff out on four wheeler dollies, that just killed that whole idea. Now you either have to carry it or use a hand truck. So there's a reason for, you know, sometimes summing things down to a lower amount because of the inconvenience. Another thing to keep in mind is weight. So let's say, for example, you remove a small gun safe. A small gun safe is no bigger than a nightstand, yet it weighs 10 times as much. So in your truck, when you're charged for weight by the dump, if you're just charging all normally, and all of a sudden you have this piece in here that weighs 10 times as much, maybe you have a couple of those kind of pieces, you're gonna be really heavy when you go to the dump and that's how you are charged. And that's gonna pull away from your overall profit. The same thing could be said about my favorite example, which is glass. If you get a thick piece of glass, maybe it was used by a breakfast table or a dining room table top, realistically, it's no bigger than a large picture frame, yet it weighs 10 times as much. And if you were to get, let's say, 10 pieces of large glass that is thick inside of your truck, that's probably gonna be close to half of a ton of weight. That's a lot. That's equivalent to like three or four couches. So think about that volume size and how it doesn't quite add up. So I personally charge a low extra per an item. If I'm taking away three gun safes, I'm charging three individual cost extra in addition to the overall volume. The same thing for the weight. If I'm having to bag up 10 bags worth of stuff from the kitchen, I'm gonna charge an additional amount of money for that. If I have to go up to the third floor, I'm gonna charge an additional amount of money. It is added time. Junk removal is about disposal but somebody is doing the labor and that person needs to be paid for their time. So that's why you want to charge a little extra. You want to make sure that you're not losing profit because you don't think that people will pay the extra money. You're inconveniencing yourself as a business. You need to make up for that. The next thing is kind of going back a couple of steps when it came to volume, and that is visualization of your load. It's gonna be very helpful when it comes to estimates. A good rule of thumb, in my opinion, is to consider everything in reference to the size of a refrigerator. So we talked about the volume, finding your cubic yardage. 
a typical standard refrigerator. Though that is a standard refrigerator and they are typically two cubic yards. So you are allow a six feet in height, three feet in width, three feet in depth. That is a two cubic yard item. A good way to think about your volume is to decide how many of these refrigerators can I fit into my truck standing upright? If you have a pickup truck, can you stand it down? Is it gonna kill your whole bed? You might only have a two to two and a half cubic yard truck for the bed. If it fits in a minivan or a cargo van, can you fit maybe one and a half of them in there technically? You might have a little closer to a three cubic yard area. If you have a five by eight trailer, guess what? There's a good chance you can't put them side by side. You might either have to stagger them or line them up in the middle and then you have some wiggle room on the side. So maybe you can only fit realistically maybe four to five of them in there. Or if you have a six and a half by 12 foot trailer, you should be able to fit eight in there. But what you can do is when you go to a job to give an estimate, look at the pieces that they want you to take. Think about if you were to stand them up and put them up right next to your fridge, how equivalent is that going to be in spacing? Could you fit all this stuff in your truck knowing that it can hold eight refrigerators? You're just comparing sizes. That's a good way to just visualize stuff if that's all you're going off of. The same thing can be said about boxes. If you, so if you've ever moved before, moving companies use pretty much the same size of large box. It's a four and a half cubic foot box. They're usually 24 inches tall by 18 by 18. And typically you can fit about five of those across, four to five boxes across in most trailers that are about six and a half feet long. And then you can stack a row on top of that, which means that two rows stacked up is a quarter of a truck for a 12 foot trailer. So you should be able to fit eight total rows plus eight on top. And that's a good way to kind of visualize that. So if you have a bunch of boxes and miscellaneous in the corner of an apartment and they're saying, yeah, that all goes, take a look at it and try to think, okay, if I were to stack up eight large boxes in a corner, volume wise, is it about the same? If it is, then you know, okay, that's gonna be you know, a quarter of a truck, a half of a truck. So use that as an example. Find an item that you are very familiar with that's large and bulky, figure out how much room it takes up, and then use that to compare towards other items. That is the best thing I could recommend for visualization. And then the last thing is pricing, how to price, how much to price. I personally would recommend that you find a local franchise in your area, find out how much they charge, compare their size of their truck to yours and then run that number and then use that number to your advantage. Another thing you could do is depending on your area, it's good to at least know generally what people are charging. So maybe you don't have a full setup. Maybe you're not licensed and insured. Those are things to consider. You shouldn't be charging as much as Winnie Hunting Got Junk if you're not providing the same service as they do to the same extent. So. If you're in, let's say, Louisiana, for example, I don't know, maybe you're kind of out in the, kind of off in a, you have a little bit of that working class around you, people do it themselves. You have no idea how much to charge. You hear California charges a thousand bucks a load, Florida charges $600 a load, New York charges 900, North Carolina charges 600. Well, how much does Louisiana charge? I would recommend trying to find out how much your local company find charges to at least get that ballpark. So if you know, oh, they charge five fifty for a full load, assume that your general area is going to be between four fifty and six hundred. So you have at least an idea of how much your full load should cost. A company that's been in business for more than a few months should have a pretty good idea of how much to charge to still make profit. So they should be a good way to go off of to try to determine around the point that you should be. But that is what I would personally do. If you can call up a couple of franchises, they're probably not gonna give you a price over the phone, but if you can find their price sheet online or get an idea of their pricing from somebody else, it would be a good way to kind of get an idea of what range you should be in yourself. And then just make sure that you are accustoming that based on the size of the vehicle and that the amount of services you're able to provide. So, that is what I would do for pricing as a beginner. After that, you're gonna to start to learn the individual little details that you can do. You'll start to 
understand a bit better as far as how much individual things weigh and how much room takes up in the truck. You're gonna come across stuff that doesn't stack well. You need to bellow it all. You're gonna run into construction debris eventually. You know how much to charge for you know, a trailer full of tile versus a trailer full of drywall versus a trailer full of cardboard, right? So I would start in the beginning. Your two main focuses is going to be time and volume. And then at that point, you can start getting into the nitty gritty of weight and individual specialty items. But know how much it's gonna cost to run your operation and then find out what you need to focus on for pricing, how much to price, and then you just go forward from there and you will learn over time, I promise you. You're not just gonna be confused in a year from now. You might change your pricing a few times because you'll start to realize as you grow, it costs more to run a business and you need to implement that into your pricing. But overall, you should only be learning as you go. You're likely not going to fall backwards when it comes to pricing. So those are my tips. If you have any questions, comment them down below. If you notice, I did not give out specific numbers. That is because it varies by every location. Every company is gonna charge a little differently. I can't just say, oh, this is how much I charge. It's not gonna give you guys a good idea of how much you should charge, unless you're in my area, in which case I'm still not gonna tell you how much I charge. But check out other companies like the franchises, 1-800-GOT-JUNK, College Hunks, Junk King, Junk Luggers, the list goes on. Those big guys, they know what they're doing. That's why they're so successful. That's why they have so many franchises. Learn from them. Whatever they're doing in their business, implement in your own. If you see them marketing one way, market the same way. If you see them, you know, they're operating with X amount of guys typically, and this is how much time they allow. Those are good numbers to use for yourself. So just an idea, putting it out there. But that is, I think is a pretty good example of what you should be doing price-wise if you are just starting out in junk removal. And I wish you all luck.